hi there everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today, I have a fun little Izzet deck for you. But before we get into it, I'm going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it, and the link will be down below. And today, we're going, going crazy here, and it's basically a cycle discard fun deck, kind of. But, you know, we'll get into the creatures, because they'll actually spell out the whole deck for us for sure. And the first one is Riel the Everwise. It's a one blue and a red, zero three. Uh, she gets plus one for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. If you re remember Rune Chanter's Pike, that pretty much took over standard for a long time. And then whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. And for you to, some cards let you discard your whole hand and then you basically draw double a hand. It's pretty cool. It's pretty super cute actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. Next up is the Sprite Dragon. It is a blue and a red for a 1-1 Flying Haste Dragon. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 counter on him. So you're just going to play this dude and then play spells. Yep. Counter your dude, I get bigger. Exactly. Now this guy no one knows. A Glint Horn Buccaneer. It's a 1 and 2 red Minotaur Pirate. He's a 2-4 Haste. When you discard a card, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. So that's pretty cool. And then if you, when he attacks, you can pay one and a red, discard a card, and draw a card, and then you can only do this when he attacks, so. That's pretty neat. Yeah, so he can definitely ping for one, if anything. He has a big butt to survive most combat, and if you just stand there and discard cards by cycling, then, you know, you can maybe win the game. Uh, next up is Neheb, the Dreadhorde Champion. It is two red and two for a 5-4 Trample. Whenever it does combat damage to a player or planeswalker, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, draw that many cards and add that much red mana. Until the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and in phases in. Yep. So if you have Homegirl out and this guy, then you get double cards. Yeah. Because he makes you discard any number you want, and then she triggers off of when you discard. So you're like, cool, draw like two times the amount of cards I discard. Exactly. And then hopefully you spend that red mana to cast whatever you draw, because yeah. now you have a giant hand for sure. Oh, of course, the next one is one of my favorites is Nim Mizet Perun. Yeah, three blue, three red, five five. He cannot be countered. Yeah, of course, he has flying, and whenever you draw a card, deals one damage to any target. And whenever you cast an insert sorcery card, you may draw a card. Cool, thanks. I will take that. I will take that. Yeah, every time. If he gets to stick in play, <clears throat> you should be winning the game because yeah. he's pretty hard to deal with. As long as you get to, they say pass, and you get to have him, you can win the game for sure. Next up is Yadaro, the Wandering Monster. He is two red and five for an 8-8 eight, eight Trample Haste. But he got cycling for red and one. Whenever you cycle him, shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named Yadaro four or more times this game, put it onto the battlefield and into you. Put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. So the first time you cycle him, you just shuffle him away and you don't get him. But yeah. you just do that a couple more times and then you do it again. And from that point on, you cycle him and you get a free 8-8 Trample Haste. Yep. So therefore, even with the Riel, that you're drawing double cards and hopefully get to him soon. And all the discarding and drawing and then hopefully yeah. you can just... Because cycling is down. counting as discarding. So you could be like, hey, free card draw. I'm like, thanks. Uh, to help with the discard is Cathartic Reunion. It's the rougher of the two. It's a one and a red sorcery. As an additional cost, cost to cast Cathartic Reunion, discard two cards and then you draw three cards. It, especially if you do this early game because you don't know what you're going to draw and you might screw yourself over. But to be able to I don't know, discard two, draw five, seems pretty good. It's pretty good. Next up is Expansion Explosion, the hybrid or the, the split card. Yep. Expansion is two red or two blue. And it's an instant copy target instant or sorcery spell with cover mana cost four or less. You may choose new card targets for that copy. Just great. Dude, the card's awesome. It's just super good. And then sometimes you need to win, so you're like Explosion, which is two red, two blue, and X. Uh, instant Explosion does X damage to target, uh, to target, to any one target, and then target player draws X cards. Yeah. So you're like, cool, you can take six, I'm gonna draw six yeah. things. Thanks, and with Nahib, this should make this very simple. Yeah. Discard all the cards, get all the mana, blast them really fast. The next one, of course, is one of the new spells. It's pretty awesome. Fire Prophecy, it's one in a red instant. Just three damage to a target creature. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. If you do, draw a card. It's just help filter your deck for sure. Yeah, we're just can tripping with this whole deck, really. Oh yeah. Next is Beacon Bolt. It is a blue, red, and one for a sorcery. It deals damage equal to the number of total cards of instant sorceries you own in exile and in your graveyard. 
And it's got jump start, so you can cast this from a graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other cost to then exile this card. Yep. Discarding and drawing and then killing something? Seems, seems yeah, pretty good. Seems good. Alright, this one, the Royal Scions. It's one blue and a red. He's a, they're uh, five loyalty planes walking for 30. Plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. So there you go. Uh, plus one target creature gets plus two and first strike and trample until end of turn. So if you do this on Ariel when she has like five plus, it really helps. And then minus eight, uh, draw four. Then if you do Scion deals damage to equal to the number of cards in your hand. So on Arena, I was able to kill with that card because I already had drew eight from another spell we haven't talked about. And then this, and then it just goes crazy. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Next up, Channeled Force. It is a blue, red, and two for an instant. As additional cost to cast this spell, discard X cards. Target player draws X. Channeled Force deals X damage to one creature or planeswalker. Yeah. And so your X is you discard however many you want to do discard. That's your X. So if you discard four, you draw four. Yeah. And you deal four. And hopefully you're you're all about luck too. So if you don't have real in the field, you're just like, let's see what I draw. Kill that thing and then uh, hopefully I can yeah. draw what I need to. Now, of course, one of the old uh, Planeswalkers, Ral, uh, is it Vi Viceroy? It's three blue and a red for a five loyalty Planeswalker. And see how the power creep happened already in like a few sets. But plus one, look at the top two cards in your library. Put one of them in your hand, the other one in the graveyard. Sadly, you don't discard it, but that's okay. Minus three, deal damage to target creature or player equal to the number of instant sorcery cards you own in the graveyard or in exile. And then minus eight is a game changer and a winner. So you get emblem and whenever you cast an instant sorcery with this emblem, deals four damage to any target and you draw two cards. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, if he gets an emblem, then they're probably dying. Yeah, just straight up. It's it's too easy, and especially in a deck like this where like half the cards we play cantrip, you're going to lose out. Yeah, straight up, for sure. Now, of course, uh, that is the deck, and we'll get into lands, and we have four Fable Passages, because it's really good. Uh, we have our lands and mountains, and we have our steam vents, and that's it. No other special lands but those. I just feel like I just wanted to get in there and get out. No, no tap lands besides maybe Fable Passage, but that's okay. Yeah, but super simple, just red blue. Yep, exactly. Uh, with that, the deck list will be down below, and uh, it will be on Arena soon enough for you to go ahead and see it on the Playville, and hopefully you enjoyed your stay at Utopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.